Hello, and welcome again to the University Church of Christ Bible Study. Today, we'll be studying from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. So we invite you to get a Bible and a pencil and a piece of paper that you can write down for examination uh, the scriptures that we'll be putting forth on tonight. Um, so we'll begin our study. Um, right after we have a song and a prayer. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiance, peace will be me. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining, till night shall vanish in eternal day. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time that you've given us to study your word. We pray that as we continue to look at the importance of holding fast to a sound doctrine, that we'll not only see it on the pages, but make it real in each one of our lives, each and every day. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, I put together the lessons just a little bit differently, just to try to help me manage my time a little better. Um, I pre-recorded um, a couple of parts of this earlier. Um, and so, uh, um, beginning at verse five, um, so I'll, I'll be picking up there. Um, I just want to bring us up to where we are. Um, Paul um, writes to Timothy after leaving him in Ephesus. Um, probably after he reached Macedonia. Um, and uh, he's urging this young man uh, and actually charging him, commanding him to teach no other doctrine uh, and not to get into things uh, that concern doctrine uh, that will only lead to uh, confusion um, and uh, disarray. Um, fables and genealogies that were prevalent of the time. He told him to, uh, to stay away from those kinds of things in his preaching of sound doctrine. Um, so uh, with that, let's pick up in verse number five. And here is the uh, pre-recorded um, lesson that I did just briefly um, on this particular subject or on these particular verses. Verse number five is kind of full. It has a lot to talk about as far as uh, what the whole purpose of sound doctrine and of God's will for mankind is. So I think it's worth um, just taking a minute to explore this particular verse. Um, so uh, we just share a screen here. Okay, um, in this uh, particular verse, Paul gives us what the ultimate goal uh, of sound doctrine is, why Paul wants the doctrine to be so sound. Now remember, this applies not only to Timothy, this also applies uh, to everybody that will hear him. Um, and I, I'd, I'd like for us to keep the Great Commission in mind um, Matthew chapter 28, um, verses 18, 19, and 20, um, that uh, we're commanded to go into all of the world and preach the gospel. And uh, Paul has pretty much given Timothy um, a good look at what that might look like as an evangelist or as a young man or as one that's actually sent uh, to do this particular uh, uh, work. 
Um, it has to be out of love. Um, it ought to bring men to love. Um, it, it, it's the agape love, very close uh, to the word that we see um, all over for Jesus as he came and he gave his life um, willingly for the good of all mankind. Now, this word is similar. Um, it's, 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 it's a, a, a word uh, about goodwill and, and about uh, looking out for um, the, the good of all of your brother. Um, and, and, and so, you know, uh, when sound doctrine is being preached, we got to know that this is present, that there's concern, um, that there's uh, even a little greater than concern, a love. Uh, a genuine concern for the goodwill of all of God's people. Um, in John uh, 15th chapter um, and verses uh, 9, uh, 10, and 10, um, we see Jesus uh, using this word as he talked about how uh, he and the Father loved. Um, he loved the father and the father loved him. Um, how uh, it was shown through uh, keeping his commandments and how we can show our agape by keeping uh, the commandments. And then in verse number 13, um, that very touching passage of scripture where he says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Then in Romans, the eighth chapter, um, in verses 35 through uh, 39, um, we see um, that Paul is encouraging um, the Roman Christians there to understand that nothing will be able to separate us from the uh, love, the agape, uh, of God, God's goodwill, God's um, uh, benevolent love towards us. Um, and he mentions that a couple of times between verses 35 and 39. And then in Romans chapter 12 and verse number nine, uh, he tells that same uh, group of people um, to let nothing be done with, uh, with dissemination or um, that their love be without dissemination and, or, or deceit, um, that their love be uh, pure. Um, and that is their benevolent love. Um, First Corinthians chapter 13, one through three, um, we, we uh, a passage of scripture I know we're familiar with. Um, it, 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 it's used seven times in those 13 verses. Um, and then also in chapter 14, um, in the very first verse, um, it's used once again. So uh, we see it used prevalently there, um, all talking about how uh, we should be useful, how we should be benevolent, how we should um, be caring for uh, one another. Um, even in um, this first Corinthians passage, he talked about things that will fail um, at the end, um, but tells us that faith, hope, um, and charity or love. By the way, um, there are several different words for um, this uh, particular uh, word agape. Um, we see charity um, 28 times, um, love 86 times, the word dear one time, um, and, and a number of other ways it's used, um, just so that you'll know that when you look up the word agape, you may see, see it used in several different, uh, different ways. Um, but anyway, um, in, um, he moves on to um, pure in heart. He tells us um, that um, not only um, must, um, the uh, commandment lead to uh, love, but also a purity of heart. Um, in several places, we see how important this is, um, even from the mouth of the Lord himself on that great sermon on the mountain, Matthew chapter five and verse number eight, 
um, where um, he talks about blessed thou the pure in heart. Um, in Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 through 19, he talks about how important it is uh, to keep the heart um, because it's, it, 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 um, it's responsible um, for um, things that, that, uh, that, that are really in us, um, reminding us that it's not the things that go in, um, but it's the heart, it's what comes out of the heart um, that defiles us. And then in Acts chapter two, um, it, it, it's it's it, the, the, the 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 purity of heart is is really really shown um, in these first believers. Um, in Acts chapter two and verse number thirty seven, we see that now after they heard this, um, they were pierced to their hearts. Um, so what pierced their hearts? What what cut their hearts open? Um, to make them uh, open to purity uh, was the, the, the gospel that was preached to them um, on that day. And of course, we know that those are the ones that went on um, and were baptized. Um, but um, then in verse number 46, I think is something worth noting, uh, even as we're looking at the importance of sound doctrine today um, and um, and in the life of uh, Timothy um, and the church of Ephesus, um, it says in verse number 46 um, of Acts chapter two, um, and day by day continuing with one mind uh, in the temple and breaking bread from house to house together with gladness and sincerity of hearts. So a sincerity of heart or a pure heart was necessary um, even uh, for the first believers um, who, who were introduced to the, uh, to, to, to the truth that they crucified the uh, gift of God uh, to all of mankind. Uh, pure conscience, we talked uh, quite a bit about um, the uh, meaning of pure conscience. Um, in, in Romans 13, 5, um, we see um, how that works out both um, in, um, in, in us being pleasing to God and to our own mindset. Um, speaking about the law, Paul writes um, about how the law is put there for evildoers um, and it's also put there for our conscience. Um, and this, this plays out uh, for us. Um, even as Christians, um, because it serves as a reminder um, and, 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 and helps us to, to fall back in place. Um, I, I, I can speak personally um, that in times past, um, I've, in, in my younger days, I, I was a bit of a, a speed demon uh, when I drove. Um, and I, I found that uh, when, when I did that, I'd often be looking around for policemen um, because I'd never know where he'd be. Um, and if he ever caught me going as fast as he's going, as I was going, um, I'm sure to get a ticket. Um, but since the days that I've slowed down, um, it, it, it doesn't bother me anymore that, that uh, police may be watching me uh, because I'm doing nothing um, that would really uh, warrant them. Um, by law um, to 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 want to um, to 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 want to uh, bother me, uh, so um, that, that that that's a matter of conscience. As long as I'm doing what the law says, then my conscience is clear. And so Romans and Paul wants us to see that. Um, and also in Roman in First uh, Peter chapter three, in verse number twenty one, we looked at that um, how. Uh, we can gain a conscience that is pure before God, the mighty maker. Um, and, um, and that is uh, through the baptism. Then sincere faith. Um, some translations render it unfeigned faith. Um, and uh, yeah, sincere faith. Um, it, used together these words, sincere faith. Um, I only found them twice, um, and they're both addressed uh, to the young man, Timothy, 
I want in this passage of scripture, first Timothy chapter five, chapter one and verse five, and then in second Timothy chapter one and verse five. Okay, and so um, as we move on um, from verse five, um, and we um, begin to look at more of the scriptures that are written there, Paul goes on to say some other things um, about um, sound doctrine in verse six. Um, he says, um, from which some having swerved, having turned aside unto vain janglings. Um, and, um, you know, I, I can say that I, being in the church for as long as I have, um, have seen actually these kinds of things happening, um, things that don't matter anything, and people end up following after them. Did some work with a young man, I'm not gonna mention his name, um, very, very talented, uh, young man um, and um, really had the potential to do a lot of good work uh, for the Lord, but decided that um, listening to what some of the other people were saying, um, that the church wasn't appreciative enough to him uh, for his talents and decided that he was going to um, get involved into another faith. Um, and um, so, you know, just things that don't matter anything. This is over singing, believe it or not. Um, so, you know, things that don't mean anything have caused men to turn aside. Um, nonetheless, the amount of uh, false doctrines that we're hearing um, that come quietly and softly um, that we don't always recognize, um, you, you know, um, taking little things in, um, and, and, and making big things out of them and taking big things and making little things out of them. We gotta be careful of all of these things because they cause men to swerve um, and turn aside uh, from the truth. Um, desiring to be teachers of the law in verse seven and understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Um, and, um, there's some things that we need to understand about the law. I know we um, kind of get the understanding that there's really not um, any saving characteristics um, of the law, but the law does have purpose. Um, just let me share also this uh, video, um, if you will, that I did um, earlier also. Um, in this um, concerning the law, because I think we need to have a good understanding of, of what the law really is and, and why we have it. Sorry, just give me one second here. Let's talk about just for a minute, some uses that we find for the law. First of all, Paul uh, puts in Romans chapter 15 and verse number four, how the law was put there for our learning. It teaches us about the holiness of God, how God demanded that his people be holy, how he wanted them to come before them. They all spoke to um, the relationship that God really wanted with his children and uh, written down um, so we can really see uh, what God would really like for the relationship between him and his children to look like. So what they went through, God had written down um, that we can learn from it. Also, um, some of the writings were for our admonition, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, verses that were before that um, 
talk about uh, um, the, 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 how God brought the children of Israel through the wilderness um, and how they forsook him um, and how he uh, dealt with them. And um, from that, we are to learn how to not tempt God, how to not God make God angry at us. And so uh, we learn that from that period uh, in which uh, the law was given. I want to spend just a minute here because this is very important to us as Christians, um, as we in living in New Testament times. And of course, I'll, I'll, I'll show in just a minute, um, just for the point of sake, I, I'm sure we're all aware that we're no longer under the law, um, but now we're under um, under the law of Moses, that is, we're under the law of Christ now, um, and that uh, only commands belief acted upon by faith. So, um, but uh, in this Romans um, um, piece here, Paul does a very important thing about uh, letting, the, letting us understand exactly what the law does for us, um, how, how things work with the law. Um, one of the first things that we see him talk about in verse number five, if you have a Bible, of uh, Romans chapter seven, um, is how the law arouses um, uh, the, the works of death. He says, for when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were um, at work in my members to bear fruit uh, to death. And so we see there that uh, the, the, uh, the law, it only worked uh, death. Um, to Paul, it only aroused those um, things that, that led to death uh, for Paul. Um, but he also says in um, verse number seven, um, you see the law, the, 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 the law really opens our eyes to some things um, because, you know, we, we, uh, we're creatures that will act on what we know. Um, and if we don't know, then it would be okay. Um, and so Paul lets us know that the law does that for us. It makes us aware of certain sins um, that, we, uh, that, that we otherwise would not have known was displeasing to God unless God put them in his law. Um, in verse seven, he says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Uh, on the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, for I would not have known covet, covetousness unless the law said, you shall not covet. Um, and uh, just might as well throw verse eight in there too. He says, but sin takes, uh, sin taking opportunity uh, by commandment produced in me, um, um, all manners of desire, for apart from the law, sin was dead. And so um, the, the law really opens my eyes and, 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 and lets me know what's pleasing to God because God states what he wants uh, in the law. And I, I can see just how short I, I am on those things or where I need to change and understand that um, I can't covet, um, that I can't rob and steal, um, that I can't bear false witnesses. Um, that uh, you, you, you know, these are the things that the law brought to me, um, and, uh, and 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 unless the law brought this kind of knowledge to me, um, then I would be um, absolutely um, unpleasing to God. Um, then finally, in this, in this little section here, um, as Paul goes on down um, in uh, verse 23, um, he talks about another law um, in my members, 
warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members and recognizing that because of this struggle, how wretched he is. Um, and so the, the law makes us aware of that, just how wretched and sinful, I mean, just the very thought of some things that the law makes us aware of, uh, makes us wretched um, and um, shows us how far apart we really are uh, from God. Um, and um, another use for the law um, is that it brings us to Christ. Um, and of course, Galatians chapter three, verses 23 through 26 talks about um, how the law is a tutor. Um, and um, it was only here for a little while. Um, and that verse, and that, that passage, um, I believe kind of concludes um, with the understanding um, that the tutor is no longer needed because um, the, the child is brought to uh, full maturity and able to take care of his own. I believe we discussed that when we, um, when we looked at the book of Galatians. Um, so uh, since that is the case, uh, we need to understand that the law also uh, has, uh, has done what it needed to do. Um, I, I, I think I'd be a little remiss if I just didn't mention uh, the, 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 uh, the, the fact that um, the law has um, really no, again, I'm speaking of the law of Moses. Um, it has no saving quality to it. Um, it only points us to um, the fact that we need to be saved. It only uh, makes us aware of the sin. It, it, it doesn't. It, 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 there's nothing in the law that can um, that, that can help us beyond um, uh, helping us to understand our condition. Um, therefore, we really need to uh, just take a moment and just uh, mention um, some of the passages of scripture um, that lets us know. Um, that the law is really not um, what we need to follow, but rather uh, we need to follow um, Christ. Um, Galatians. Let me just turn to this passage of scripture here. Um, Galatians chapter 3, and verse number 10. Um, lets us know that the law is a curse. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the books of the law and to do them. Um, and so um, you take a look at those laws um, and you, you, you know, um, I, 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 I think people um, in general misunderstand um, the atonement, um, the, 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 the day when sacrifice was made on behalf of um, the sins of the people. Um, all that did was roll the sins over. It did not forgive uh, any of the sins uh, when we get to the Hebrew letter we'll look a little more closely at that, but um, it, 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 we, we need to understand that, that, that that's a problem with the law um, as compared to what Christ gives us. Um, so um, since it shows us so much and could do so little about it, um, it's a curse unless we can keep the whole thing. And it's not talking about um, slipping up um, and, um, and, and then being able to get back on track. Under the law, you could not do that because there's no forgiveness. Once uh, you sin, um, you, 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 you had a problem until the, uh, until the atonement was paid. And Christ had, and, and God had planned for that. 
uh, when he gave the law, um, and that was the end of the law, Christ. So anybody trying to still live under the law um, is living under a curse. Um, and then, uh, in Colossians chapter 3, in verse number 13, we see that Christ um, has redeemed us from the law. Um, we, we, the, the law, that, that um, law of righteousness, it's been fulfilled by Christ. Um, so Christ redeemed us um, by doing that. Um, since he done that, there's no more need uh, for that law. Um, so uh, it took his blood to do that. And that needs to be considered when we're talking about following um, a, a law that, um, that is outdated, uh, quite frankly. Again, uh, the Galatians writer uh, mentioned to us early on in Galatians chapter three, uh, how he, that the law was just a tutor that brings us to Christ. Um, then there's also uh, the fact that um, Christ um, blotted out all of the handwriting and all of the ordinances um, that were against us. And we need to understand that they were against us because we were so incapable of living up to them um, because they were so holy and so righteous and we are not. Uh, but they were nailed to the cross in, in the book of Colossians uh, chapter two and verse number 14. Okay. So Paul goes on and um, just to finish out uh, through verse 11, um, he lets us know that um, the doctrine uh, that is good doctrine um, includes a whole host of things that we today very much need to talk about. Time won't permit for us to go through these one by one, um, but certainly some things in here that each one of us need to be aware of um, in our everyday living if we're living um, as uh, um, those that are living under sound doctrine. So just to name a few of these, um, he says um, that the law is not made for the righteous person, but for the lawless and for the insubordinate, for the ungodly, for the sinner, for the unholy and profane, for the murderer, for the fathers and murderers of mothers, uh, for manslayers, fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, um, and if there is any other uh, such thing which is contrary to sound doctrine. Not a complete list, not a complete list. We need to consider everything that we do um, and make sure that it's, uh, that it's in line with um, sound doctrine. Um, and this is how the glory of the gospel um, is spread. Our homework. Um, I am. Um, want us to kind of do this together um, as a group um, this week. Um, all groups, I'm asking you all to please answer questions seven through nine on page 10 of our workbook. Um, and please be prepared to uh, make some discussion about um, some of these things um, and bring some details along with you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, again, thank you for this time. And I pray that you will um, help us to better understand and better uh, hold on to what you will have us to do uh, in accordance with your word. Help us to hold fast to all of those things that are sound, uh, especially the words that were spoken of by your holy apostles. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen.